Hi there, Josie here from Life at 50 and Beyond. Welcome again to my channel. I am going to be showing you how I have set up my mint polka dotted mini doki book and set it up not just as a wallet because I think I have already did a bit of a walkthrough on it as a wallet but I did mention on my budget binder uh, video that I am going to be showing you how I use this one as like a cash envelope well I do this because you know like a coat on coat um, envelope because a uh, cash envelope because it's not really cash how we do it when I said or mentioned on that video and also on the description box and some comments that I have also replied to some folks who commented on my budget binder binder video I alluded to Dave Ramsey and Dave Ramsey is so popular he's got this uh, wonderful way of getting folks out of debt and if you are interested you can just google his name and you'll get a lot of links and he's been a tremendous help to a lot of people and helping people get out of debt now when I said that not everything works out for us at this situation or stage in our life because I just got to know Dave Ramsey about probably earlier quarter of this year I would say around March April of 2016 and that's when I've already kind of planned out what I was gonna do to do some kind of snowball and uh, before I even knew how it was called <laughs> was also to pay down one credit card at a time and then um, you know I wasn't doing minimum payment on the others like what he said minimum payment for the rest big payment on the one and then once you're done with that and do the next one so that's what I've incorporated because originally I was not just making minimum payments on the other cards because I didn't want to ruin our credit but in essence if you want to fix your credit card debt you gotta be able to pay up quickly uh, so that's what I've incorporated instead of adding let's say if my minimum payment let's say for example was fifty dollars I would double it to a hundred and that would be happening on several other credit cards and of course it will delay the payment so I understand why he was saying that minimum payment for all others and then choose the one probably the one with the highest interest rate first or the one with the biggest balance to pay down or he has also advised that if you want to pay down the one with the least balance so at least you can feel like you have accomplished something and that's what I've done I would pay off the ones with the least balance and it feels so good to cross them out believe me I know that sometimes I think that oh maybe I should pay down the big one first so that at least or the one with the highest interest rate but if that higher interest rate has a big balance for quick satisfaction I think paying down the balance of those with the lowest amount of credit or uh, balance then again the more you get inspired and you want to do more and more and more and I think that's how others did it anyway so anyway what I'm saying that I wasn't really doing is that we don't carry cash a lot first of all there was one time I've been pickpocketed because uh, imagine yourself in a subway train packed with people and there are some pickpockets and they're good at that they're usually targeting the electronics and stuff but if they see your wallet they will take that too so uh, I lost a few couple hundred dollars maybe not a whole lot but can you imagine that if I carry a wallet full of cash I, I mean I I am just afraid of the consequence of losing money at least with a credit card if somebody steals your credit card even your credit card information there's still a way for you to catch them or at least report to your credit card company and they'll cover it you know even a debit card they'll cover it because they cover you for some certain point but a cash where can you go if you already have all your cash with you and you lost them that's that's my biggest fear and I don't know if that's the biggest fear of others but I know a lot of those that follow the Dave Ramsey 
formula they do carry cash and i think you know they are pretty secured enough and confident enough that they're not going to misplace it or lose it but for me i i always try to be very careful so what we use is we have a system we're in we have either pay by paypal we only pay with our paypal in, in locations that do not accept credit cards per se okay our paypal is like a debit card we do have debit cards but tied into a lot of our cash accounts so i'm trying to be careful also I told my husband don't use our atm or debit cards my husband chose one which is a barclay card and he also has capital one quicksilver and i have capital one quicksilver as well so if i do my hauls or i do my shopping what i do is i allocate the amount as if i'm paying it in cash you just have to remember to be very very cognizant of that and stay within budget so treating it like cash and the good thing why i mentioned this too and i'm in no way sponsored by these companies i'm just telling you what we're using we chose them because um not as much as they have low interest rate because again we want to pay off the card so we don't really care but they allow you to earn cash backs. And I know there are a lot of companies there that offer probably better cash backs or rewards program. But right now, these are the ones that we have. And with Barclay card, they don't even have an annual fee as long as you use the card, even though you don't carry a balance. I think Capital One, if you don't carry a balance, they'll charge you X amount of dollars for an annual fee. However, if you can transpose or translate your rewards into cash then that can cover that annual fee but for that Barclay card we have been earning points and we could either put in our, in our bank account or even uh, pay down the balance of what we have you know so since we use it a lot especially my husband's uh, bank card or NFL or Barclay card which has a huge opening when we do know that we're gonna buy big purchases and we have the cash on hand to pay it off at the end of uh, the billing cycle we use that and man we earn a lot of money and throughout the I would say throughout a couple of years that we've been doing that we've been already earning well, I would say already in the thousands and can you imagine that that's free money but again you gotta be disciplined if you want to pay down your bill and you are just gonna accumulate more credit it's not gonna work okay so that's just what we're not doing right now but everything else we're trying to do the best we can so we're kind of like semi <laughs> you know so anyway this is my mint doki I did a walkthrough on this so let me just show you um, I made sure that no important account information is showing up here uh, on this dashboard I have my driver's license I have my company or work card in case I need to go to work and of course I'll be carrying this with me and there's my health card and here's my capital one card quicksilver that earns me cash back and and rewards and here's my PayPal if I need to pay with via ATM or debit and this is our debit card uh, that's tied into a visa card as well and we have to make sure that this is a credit union and I do not really use this as much as possible because again it's tied to our account but if if all of this I cannot use then I will use this one um, <clears throat> so I just kind of put some kind of cute clips here <laughs> And this is where the cash goes and I would sometimes carry between $40 to 60 at an average uh, from time to time I do have a little bit over a hundred if I know for sure that I want to pay cash on that item pay in cash and that's the only time I will be carrying cash but at least it's not a whole lot of money um, I uh, this is how I set it up with my uh, sticky notes here uh, this, this I got from the recollections this today one came with the set you've seen my walkthrough on that if you haven't please watch my DIY planner but these are the sticky notes and this is the calendar that I got this design because it works well with the mint color and what I'm trying to do is just put I think on my walkthrough I did four months but right now because I put other items here I didn't want to really crowd it because I don't want these rings to have gaps and I mentioned that also in my 
other videos so I just used uh, two months I put two months so that it allows me to pour forward plan uh, for a couple of months from from the current month to the next month and I'll be using this in 2017 I have been using this for a bit now uh, just to get used to it but the calendar system because I'm starting 2017 on the calendar I haven't yet I am using the calendar system here to again schedule my shopping and also mark down how much I should be spending there and for example I didn't put in anything here yet we're probably putting here notes and thoughts probably the urgent needs that we have for the month for example uh, okay this month I need to replace the toner <laughs> of our printer and uh, oh this month I need to uh, purchase a couple more light bulbs for these rooms you know again um, I just want to clarify this is not a budget planner I do have the budget binder so not everything not all the expenses will be here this is just specifically for shopping our shopping needs okay so anything that I will purchase either here or online will be here now what I'll be using the monthly calendar for and I'll be filling this out and um, I will be just marking the days that I will be doing my shopping and also mark the days that I have been paid so this like coincide there and also I will mark okay there's a big bill coming up on this month I will be trying to avoid doing hauls or doing other shoppings that can be put off to the next month etc etc so that's just a tip for you so that's why it's important to have a shopping planner to keep you on track so that you don't think oh I got paid but then you've forgotten that hey there's an automatic payment for something that's only due every three months and I think I kind of alluded to that on one uh, on my budget binder planner video that there are times that there are bills that I only pay once every three months there's even a bill that you pay only twice a year which is property tax right if it's not included with your mortgage or rental property is that way so I have to make sure that I mark them so that I still stay within budget in my shopping I know I track them with my budget binder but sometimes when you're out you don't even think about your budget binder right and if I don't mark it down here I might get carried away that's why it is important to have a shopping planner now I'm also going to be using the weekly planner here for marking down coinciding to here my errand or shopping dates okay now since those are going to be specific days I am going to be putting already ahead of time okay when do I buy what am I going to buy on this day at this store for example if we're going to do our grocery shopping what are the things that we need to buy so if I can fit there the majority of the things as much as possible again it's a planner as much as possible I have to list them and if they're not gonna fit I'm gonna have a shopping list with me here that I can just punch in and then just rip off okay now uh, February is the same way I'll just forward plan if in case oh, okay it's gonna be the next payday I'll just mark it down here now this is the one that's new that I have not done on that original setup I wasn't sure how I was gonna use this dividers but I think this is perfect for it other folks who are following the Dave Ramsey cash envelope system they do have some something similar or even a wallet or cash envelope wallet I'm using the eight dividers for the eight categories that I'm gonna be shopping for so for example number one is grocery okay let me just tell you in grocery they'll include also the pet food anything that we consume including the pets we have three dogs we consider our pets as family so whatever they eat but what I'm gonna be doing here let me show you what I'll do here is that oh, this one here I'm just putting it in pencil so that um, I can still erase it because I'm not quite ready yet to enter anything for January but let's say I am targeting hundred fifty dollars for this right so that's gonna be my total here and then breakdown would be human pets you know I just wanna separate them right so for example humans would be 125 pets would be 25 right I'm just saying but uh, there may be other categories there that I want to put in 
for clothing on the next tab i will be using this for our clothes and accessories that would include you know if we want to purchase bags or shoes uh, uh, aside from clothes uh, we will put them here and i think in some cases if we need to buy some kind of jewelry for if we're we have some extra that will go here too so i will put in here category also or the amount that i'm budgeting for so clothing i would put in a budget of let's say 120 40 dollars for each one of us me my husband and daughter so for example my daughter's immediate needs she will say i need a dress okay so then we will put here okay what do we need dress but i will be listing down first uh new or um interview uh, Jess okay so okay just put some these are just examples so for the 120 uh, Jessica may need a new dress for an interview and then my husband a shirt because nowadays we don't really know how much this if if this can go very far especially on the type of dress i would say this is a business casual dress or uh you know business attire it may cost her like already 80 dollars and for my husband's shirt um maybe 40. so i just want to give an allowance so for me i will not have anything this one is auto anything again that we buy not the maintenance kind like for example uh, I would say the regular always change that will be another separate folder in our budget binder but this one is for when we fill up the tank with gas that's a regular one so it's like you're shopping for gas or if we want to buy a part you know for example uh, that we need for the car like an air freshener so we put that here and again I will put how much am I allotting for for the month and then when is was it purchased now if if i say okay i still don't need um you know the air freshener until two months from now but i will put a note there we'll need air freshener by let's say february so that's where i'm going to put it there so this again is just an example now for auto let's say i have a budget of uh, for two cars i have a budget of let's say let's say uh 200 dollars for gas because we also use it for business, the car, if we're also uh, traveling to a destination where we deliver the cakes. So um, I have to incorporate that. And then, of course, I will probably um, have a separate receipt for a business transaction. But again, this is part of my shopping planner. So uh, let's say car one, car two. Car one would probably consume more. So maybe I'll put 120. And then the other one only 80 so this is just an example or uh, maybe it's not just car like I said air freshener car air freshener and I will need new one for example so I may lower this to um, let's just pretend this was just 70 and then I have $10 for air freshener something like that it's always good to budget more so that you have some leftovers as well and then the leftover you can just snowball it for next month so uh, for the same category for example if I have leftover here and I ended up not buying the air freshener and I have ten dollars yeah this will be the um, this will be the budget and then the actual right because you will total it here then deduct it for example I have only 190 and then I will have ten dollars which I will add to next month and then the home needs so on and so forth like i said uh you know let's just pretend i need fifty dollars worth and i may not i may skip it and then may i may not need anything but i may need laundry detergent which you buy often laundry detergent um uh, floor mop you know so so those are the things and then again if i don't end up buying right now because we still have a lot on our storage then i will snowball this for next month okay and then also same thing for everything else medicine 
Both my husband and I have prescription meds, but we replenish them ever so often. We have a schedule. So I'll just put here the total amount that we will be uh, spending uh, for this month and then also, you know, what type of medications and who's for. Now for the office needs, we will include here because my daughter is a full-time student and she's probably, God willing, she's after she graduates, she's marching this uh, uh, weekend. Um, she's going to be done with her undergrad, but God willing, she will be accepted to medical school and she's a full-time student. So she, her needs for her school stuff are also included in our budget. And we only have one child, so <laughs> yeah, I'm not complaining. So that would include also our home office, like for example, I mentioned toner or printer paper and my daughter's needs for her schools. And for hobby, um, my husband and daughter, they both play computer games or the Xbox games. So they, from time to time, they reward themselves with, ge with games uh, as long as we're very good on budget. And, you know, there are releases coming up pretty soon. So they've reserved some stuff already. And that's what I'm going to be putting here. And for me, for my hobby, of course, is paper crafting. And on um, this one is business because we run our home-based business, which is our bakery. And I'm going to be putting also the information here of what the things we buy for the business. For example, flour, sugar, milk those kind of things and I will be putting here the budget that I have and this one changes from time to time depending on the amount of order if we have a big order then we would have to replenish a lot so we would have to include here although we have our own uh, ledger for the expenses uh, for the Jessica X, but since I'll be carrying this only one binder or planner I won't be carrying two or three then I will have to incorporate that here so that's it that's how simple it is that's on my shopping planner if you have any questions please feel free to contact me or direct message me if you can or if you cannot comment down below and i will respond as much as possible uh if i can answer your questions again the dave ramsey method proven already we're just not doing it a hundred percent pretty soon we may if <laughs> If, uh, you know, I'm not saying we're careless people, but we've just uh, lost cash in the past already that I don't want to carry too much cash. But if, as long as you are comfortable with staying on budget and not getting carried away because you know you have a large opening on your card, make sure that you treat your credit card as cash and earn money along the way. So this is Josie again from Life at 50 and Beyond. Hope I've inspired you and let me know if you're on your way for on your financial freedom. Talk to you again. Bye-bye.